Um, to be honest, the, the title that I enjoy the most is Social Entrepreneur Senator. That's the one I enjoy the most. Um, because it talks about my uh, past and present, actually. Uh, a lot of the things that we're doing now in the Senate are still heavily connected to what we used to do as a social entrepreneur. And I was telling Prim earlier, sabi ko kung senator ako, kaya ako yung keynote, but uh, if this happened uh, two years ago, I'd probably be with all of you, you know, listening in the audience and maybe even presenting Rags to Riches and Happy Life today. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you all for um, coming. And uh, I'd like to share with you, actually, what we think are the main issues that we need to address. And in many ways, what we are all trying to address as social innovators and social entrepreneurs. So you all know about the term inclusive growth. Paulit ulit po yan. You hear that all the time. Um, and how that is actually the main uh, challenge that we all face these days. It's not only a challenge for government, it's actually a challenge for the whole country, which includes uh, the private sector, which includes government agencies, which includes multilateral uh, organizations. Everyone's challenge now when you talk about the Philippines is inclusive growth, and I'll tell you why. Ten years ago, we were called the sick man of Asia. That was how they described our economy and the Philippines, no? Napakasakit. Sick man of Asia. Tayo yung uh, uh, pinakamasakit. In fact, sick old man of Asia pa nga yan noon. Eh. And this is just uh, 10 years ago. These days, when they talk about the Philippines, they talk about us as a breakout nation. Uh, just recently, we had the World Economic Forum here, and that was really a sign that there's so much movement in the Philippines now. We were actually upgraded, our investment rating. Uh, our friends from ADB can explain further what this means, but basically, it means that these international rating agencies are telling the rest of the world, you can't bet on the Philippines. Sulit yung pera ni dito kasi uh, the investment will actually go a long way. And in fact, last year, we actually experienced 7.2% uh, GDP now. How do we contextualize 7.2%? 7.2% GDP in 2013 was the best gross domestic product percentage in the ASEAN. We were the best in the ASEAN. So compared to all of our neighbors, tayo number one. In Asia, there was only one other country. Take note, Asia. Asia is a big place. Uh, there was only one other country that actually did better than us in terms of their economy. And that was China, which had a 7.7% GDP. So can you imagine, in Asia, when you talk about economic growth, number one, China, not a surprise, guess who's number two? Philippines at 7.2%. Now, that being said, we have a problem. And uh, I think we're all here because we have a problem. So one, 2013 was a terribly difficult year for us. Kumbaga, parang bubuk na bubuk tayo last year. We had um, Asante, we had Yolanda, we had the Bohol earthquake, we had the Zamboanga siege. All of these really set us back. And even with that, we still hit 7.2% uh, growth. Our unemployment is still quite high at 7%. And uh, every so often you get headlines that talks about millions of Filipinos who are jobless and how our growth is a jobless growth. So it does remain an important fact that we need to address. For me, even more troubling is our underemployment. Our underemployment is hitting almost 20%. That means that one out of every five Filipinos are actually not working in the place where they should be working. Now, mabigat po yung number na to because the biggest sector that's actually unemployed in the Philippines are the youth. And uh, some figures will say 50%, but I recently saw some figures that showed 70% of those who are unemployed in the Philippines are youth. And we're not just talking about out-of-school youth, we're talking about college graduates as well. So these are numbers which are quite troubling. This next slide is the most troubling for me. If you look at our poverty incidents, from 2006 to 2013, it uh, roughly about 4%. But these are also the years where we experienced our tremendous growth. 
So that actually presents a paradox in some ways. How can a country with the best growth in the ASEAN, with the second best growth in, in Asia, second only to China, have these numbers in terms of poverty incidence? And this is why when we contextualize and say inclusive growth is the number one challenge, what we're saying is that with all of this growth, kung hindi pa rin itong umaabot sa pinakamalalayong lugar sa ating bayan, sa mga lugar na nakwento ni Prim na walang kuryente, walang doktor, uh, very poor educational facilities, what is this code for? Right? Now, here in Manila, in fact, here in Ortigas, you'll see malls being put up, uh, restaurants from New York actually putting up their restaurants here, new shops, new clothing shops, which are high-end and mid-end, uh, all, you know, all getting put up in the last years. No? So, you're basically contextualizing that there is growth in the Philippines, but it's really just for maybe the middle or upper middle class and the higher classes. Hindi siya talaga umaabot dun sa kung nasaan siya. Tama. So that one, that's why when we say we need to push for inclusive growth, we need to be able to make sure that this growth is more equitable. That's really the challenge that we face. Now, on one hand, this is a good challenge right now because if our economy was tanking and there are countries in uh, around us that have no growth or have very little growth, much less than us. And we're fighting for equitable growth. Mas mahirap yun, pagpabagsak yung ekonomiya ninyo. So actually, one half of the solution is already there. We're growing. We have a good economy. Um, there's more investments, little by little, coming in. We see a lot of good sectors which are blossoming. But we just need to make sure that this actually reaches our countrymen who are in desperate. Now, when I was, uh, you know, I feel kind of old already, no? Kasi we started our social enterprise uh, back in, the ideas, no, were back in 2006, which currently seems like a lifetime ago. Eight years ago na po yan. No? Formerly, Happy Noy was put up in 2007. Rags to was also put up in 2007. But we had started the ideas for these uh, social enterprises in 2006. And the idea back then is still the same idea now. We cannot solve our age-old problems with age-old solutions. Because our age-old solutions have not led to any solutions. In fact, they might have even created more problems. So the challenge for us is actually to tackle our age-old problems, problems which are older than all of us, with new and creative and innovative solutions. That's the challenge. We cannot do the same thing over and over again and expect that things will be better this time. We cannot vote in the same corrupt people and expect government to suddenly be clean. We cannot have the same old programs, anti-poverty programs, which has not worked, and suddenly expect that our poverty numbers will improve. We have to challenge ourselves to think of the most creative and innovative solutions to solve our age-old problems. That, I think, is the burden that our generation has. Our burden and maybe you can consider it a challenge, maybe we will call it our dream, is that we need to challenge ourselves to think of new, creative, innovative ways to solve these problems, which, to be frank, we did not create. But it's our, there are problems now, and they'll be the problems of our children and our children's children. So if we're able to solve them now with new, creative, innovative solutions, then we can actually change the trend. We can actually have that equitable growth. We can actually have that inclusive growth that has never been a part of our history, ever. And maybe, if we're able to change that narrative, right now, stake our claim and say, from now on forward, we will not do the same old things. We will not repeat the same mistakes. We will actually push for better solutions. Then maybe we can change the course of where we're headed and achieve that inclusive growth, which, to be frank, we haven't yet reached, but I am very optimistic with all of you here that we can reach together. Uh, very briefly, I'd like to talk about uh, some of the things that we're part of and some of the friends that we have. Some of them will actually speak now in, in this conference. But just to tell you that, we naman tayo namumulang sa creative and innovative solutions. That in fact, Filipinos, in the social enterprise world, and again, Prim had uh, mentioned this, in the world, we are known for our creative and innovative solutions. But later on, I'll also tell you what's missing. But in terms of creative and innovative solutions for communities, 
I think we're there, no? And even in the region, in the ASEAN, in Asia, maybe even you can say in the world, there are a number of great ideas which are world class, which are global in nature, which can be replicated in more areas.